300, 400 kids now. Something like that. Populate. I'm going to populate some desert island somewhere, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, please help me welcome Mike Sutherland. Thank you, Walter. At the top of my speech today, really the four rules of gun safety. I'm going to set my little working model up here. You can all tell that this is a pretend gun. This is a play light gun that I got from my three-year-old. But, as I'm going to tell you today, we're going to treat this gun like we should treat every gun. Because all guns are always loaded. And that's our number one rule of gun safety. Now, you, you hear, you wonder, is there a reason to, to teach gun safety? Well, you hear stories in the news frequently of some child being injured because of a gun that was handled improperly. Now, I'll tell you, and I'll be the first to admit, that many of those stories are, are very hyped up. And it does not happen as often as you might be led to believe because far more lives are saved every year through the presence of a gun than there are in accidental discharges and things such as that. But I would submit to you that even one accidental death or injury, especially to a child, is really too many, especially when these things can be prevented so easily. So I'm going to be talking to you today about the four rules of gun safety. I've already mentioned the first rule that all guns are always loaded. Rule number two is never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Number three, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. And then number four, be sure of your target. So let me tell you a story just to prove my opening paragraph. I once went to a church with a, a couple who had twin boys. One of these boys was a paraplegic in a wheelchair, and his grandfather had been cleaning their, his gun, and it just went off, supposedly. Now, th that's a very tough situation, and the, and the grandfather was very distraught at what he had done to his grandson, and, but the real sad situation is, is this could have been prevented. All guns are always loaded. When you pick up a gun, the first thing you should do is check it to see if it's unloaded. Now, I can't open this simulated revolver because this is a toy, but if it were, I could pop open that cylinder and check to see, are there any shells in the, in the chamber here? Whenever someone hands you a gun, if I'm, if I'm going to walk over here and hand it to, to Walter, okay, the first thing Walter should do is to check that and make sure that it's really unloaded. See it? I'm going to check it again. Because the only way you can ever tell for sure that a gun is unloaded is if you have just checked it yourself and you can make absolutely sure that that gun is unloaded. Otherwise, every gun's a loaded gun. We're not going to fool around with it. We're not going to point it in a direction that where we, where it could be dangerous or anything such of that matter. Next, never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. It always makes me nervous when I see amateurs handling a gun and they're waving it all over the place and they don't, they're not cognizant of, of what damage could be done with that gun. If you're ever at a range and you've got someone who's shown up there for the first time, they may make this mistake frequently. And it's up to more experienced shooters to be able to correct those people and let them know that, hey, watch where you're pointing it. If, even whenever I'm cleaning a gun, I will make a special effort to always point it away from the direction. I've already checked it to make sure it was unloaded, because that's gonna, going back to our first rule. But yet, I'm not going to point that gun at anything that I don't want destroyed. I would never want to pass my hand in front of the, the barrel of the gun, because I'm not willing to lose that hand. And you should treat every situation the same. The only time the barrel of a gun should be pointed at another human being is if you're in a true act of self-defense and you're willing to kill that individual in order to save your life or the life of your loved one. Any other time, the barrel of the gun should never be pointed at a human being. And if it's pointed at an animal, it should be an animal that you're willing to kill for hunting purposes or to, for, again, self-protection. Rule number three is always keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. When you're, if you've got a gun in your hand, carry it like this, so that your trigger finger here is along the side of it and pointed down the length of the barrel. 
sometimes that can be a little awkward at first to get used to, but there's no reason to ever have your finger here on this trigger until you're ready to, to, to pull it. You, you lock in your sights, and then once you've got your target established, then you can put your finger on the trigger and shoot at your target. Let's say you've got a gun for personal protection, which is a great idea to have. In the middle of the night, a robber bursts into your home. He's threatening your family. You're going to rush to the rescue and grab your gun and go take care of things. If your finger is on that trigger, you might jump out of bed. You could shoot yourself in your leg or your foot. You could shoot your wife who's laying there in bed next to you. You could shoot one of your children. You, you don't know... It may not even be a real robber. It may be one of your children that's got up to get a drink of water. And, and until you're sure of what your target is, keep that finger off the trigger so that there's no mistakes made in what you do. Be purposeful in what you're doing and make sure that, that your target is really a valid target. Then lastly, number four, be sure of your target. I showed you a while ago an example of shooting over here at this wall. Now this is a toy gun. And I know with certainty that there are no live ammunition in this gun. However, if this were a real gun, if this was real ammunition, I want to make sure what kind of ammunition do I have in here? Could this ammunition penetrate this wall and go into the next room where I don't know what's going on over there? If you've got a home defense gun, what kind of ammunition do you have loaded in that? You don't want to be putting a shotgun slug in a shotgun in order to try to protect your home. That could go right through your walls and, and hit one of your children in bed. I would recommend uh, something much lighter weight if, for a shotgun, maybe even birdshot. And that, that would do enough damage at a point blank range, to, and it would probably not penetrate at least as easily that sheetrock and be able to, to go in there and harm the rest of your family. <coughs> if you're, we heard the story that uh, Dan Avery told us a few weeks ago about his bank robbery situation. You've got to ask yourself, if you were in that situation and you were armed, what actions would you take? And if you were going to try to come to the rescue, you know, as, as you might want to do, you better be absolutely sure that the only one you're going to hit is that bad guy who's threatening lives. You don't want to hit the innocent bystander or, or take out the bank teller behind him or anything like that. So be sure of your target. Know what kind of power that you've got in that gun and, and, and be absolutely certain of this before you ever pull the trigger. There's, the loss of human life is not worth it. We, we heard Dan tell the story where there were no guns produced by the good guys in that situation. And, and in that case, it worked out well for him. And I'm, I'm glad of that. Sometimes those things aren't as fortunate and, and the bad guys can often uh, take advantage of unarmed innocents. So if you keep these four rules in mind, it's, it'll keep you safe. It'll keep those around you safe. Enjoy shooting. It's, it's part of our American heritage. It's part of our Bill of Rights and the Second Amendment to the Constitution. But be safe when you're handling firearms because we never want those accidents to happen. I'll, let me run down those four rules one more time and then I'll close. All guns are always loaded. Never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. And be sure of your target. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mike. At this time, can we get the times for our speakers, please?